Hello students, we are discussing about surface chemistry and in surface chemistry we discuss about adsorption and we discuss about catalysis and we discuss about solutions. Speaking about solutions, we have two components in a solution namely solute and then solvent. Other words, dispersed phase and dispersion medium. Based upon the nature of the dispersed phase and the dispersion medium, whether they belong to solid, liquid or gaseous space, we have eight kinds of colloidal system that we discussed. Okay, And uh, in a solution itself, we have three kinds of solutions, namely a true solution, a colloidal solution and a suspension. When the solute is of the order of uh, less than one nanometer, we call it as a true solution. When it is between one nanometer to thousand nanometer, we call it as colloidal solution. When it is above thousand nanometer, we call it as a suspension. This all we discussed in the previous session. Today we will discuss about collateral solution, various kinds of collateral solution. <clears throat> Based upon the nature of the solute and the solvent, the nature of their uh, power of interaction between them, how much affinity is there between the solute and the solvent, we can classify this collateral solution into two kinds, namely lyophilic and lyophobic. Lyophilic colloids and lyophobic colloids. What do you mean by a lyophilic colloids? When, in sense, when the solute loves the solvent, when the solute loves the solvent, philic in just like love, electrophilic, electron liking, nucleophilic, nucleus liking. So what do you mean by a lyophilic in sense, a solution which in which the solute and the solvent is having affinity among themselves, they, they bind among each other and they form a colloidal solution in sense, that we call it as lyophilic solution. Whereas, whereas lyophobic solution in sense, the solute is not having much attachment over the solvent. Phobia, phobia means fear. The solute fears with that of the solvent. So they don't bind with each other, so they don't form a solution that easily. So preparing lyophobic colloids is quite uh, tedious compared to that of lyophilic colloids. So lyophilic colloids are just prepared by mixing with each other, they form a colloidal solution if it is a lyophilic colloid. In case of the lyophobic colloids, the solute and solvent takes, needs some extra forces to come in together to form a colloidal solution. How shall we prepare a lyophobic colloidal solution? That's the today's, that's today's topic. Today we are going to discuss about how shall we prepare lyophobic colloids. We have two ways dispersion method and then condensation method. What do you mean by a dispersion method? What do you mean by a condensation method? Let us assume that this size is the collateral size. In order to obtain a size of this kind, what shall we do in sense? We shall break down a bigger size particle into a smaller size particle. A bigger size particle when break down to smaller size particle, then it is considered to be a dispersion method. Other way around. When the smaller size particles are combined together and made into a bigger size particle, then it is considered to be a condensation method. So dispersion method, bigger to medium size particle, a collateral size particle in sense, dispersion method, smaller size particle into a collateral size particle in sense, condensation method. So we have two methods. So of dispersion method we have again mechanical dispersion method. Breaking down by means of some mechanical forces, if you can do it, then it is called as mechanical dispersion method. If you do it by means of some electric current, by means of that we call as Bredig's arc method, okay, passing electric current and breaking down, that method is called as electro dispersion method. We have ultrasound ways to break down the bigger size particle into smaller size particle, we call it as ultrasonic dispersion method. And we also do have peptidization method. So these are the dispersion methods to break down your bigger size particle into a collateral size particle. In case of your condensation method, we have oxidation, reduction, hydrolysis, double decomposition, decomposition. These reactions are that to convert your tiny particles into collateral size particles. So these are called as condensation method. We do have another method called as exchange of solvent. By means of exchange of solvent also we can convert 
particles into colloidal size that is lyophobic colloidal particles we will elaborately discuss all these methods in today's session okay preparation of colloidal solutions by means of mechanical dispersion method how shall we prepare a colloidal solution by means of dispersion method and that too particularly by means of mechanical dispersion method in sense by means of colloidal mills these colloidal mills contain metal plates which revolve at around 7000 rpm that is rotations per minute in opposite direction and when bigger size particles are made to pass through this metal plates they are just grinded into colloidal size particle this is how colloidal graphite ink are produced moving to the next method of uh, preparing colloids electro dispersion method earlier we have discussed about uh, mechanical dispersion method where the colloidal uh, particles are prepared by means of colloidal mill here in this method colloidal solutions are prepared by means of electric current and that is why it is called as electro dispersion method discovered by george bredig in the year of 1898 he discovered a brown colloidal solution of platinum in that particular year uh, he passed around 100 volts of current in a bigger size platinum molecule uh, particle and that is been uh, broken down into colloidal solution and this method is uh, utilized for preparing colloidal solution of copper silver gold platinum etc okay so this is how we prepare a colloidal solution by means of electro dispersion method and the next method is ultrasonic dispersion method okay uh, here uh, ultrasonic sound waves are utilized to break down the bigger size particles into colloidal size particle uh, sound waves of frequency more than 20 kilohertz or uh, called as ultrasonic sound waves these waves of sound can break down particles and this can be utilized to break down the suspension into a colloidal solution uh, mercury salt that is a colloidal solution of mercury can be prepared by this method okay next method is peptidization so what do you mean by peptidization in sense a precipitate can be converted back into a colloidal solution by adding some electrolyte so when your precipitate is been uh, treated with some electrolyte this precipitate is converted into a colloidal solution then that process is considered to be a peptidization silver chloride when it is precipitated hydrochloric acid can be added to it in order to make it back into a colloidal solution then that hydrochloric acid is considered to be a dispersing agent or rather is called as a peptidizing agent Okay, so far we discussed about the dispersion method, where a bigger size particle is broken down into smaller size particle, and we have various kind of dispersion method, say mechanical dispersion method, electro dispersion method, peptidization, ultrasonic dispersion methods, and now moving to condensation method, where small size particle can be condensed, can be made into a colloidal size particle. by condensation method as i said before this condensation method is again classified into many kind uh, say oxidation reduction double decomposition decomposition so on now oxidation how shall we convert a smaller size particles into colloidal size particle by means of oxidation in sense uh, when hydroiodic acid is treated with iodic acid iodine salt is produced okay Uh, similarly uh, by means of reduction gold uh, solution is prepared by reducing auric chloride using formaldehyde is a method of preparing gold solution that is a example of reduction method similarly by means of hydrolysis uh, certain so metals like chromium and aluminum can be produced certain uh, solutions of chromium and aluminum salts of chromium and aluminum can be produced by hydrolysis method where uh, say ferric chloride is treated with water 
to get ferric hydroxide. So that is how we prepare a colloidal solution of iron, chromium, aluminum, etc. And double decomposition. Uh, arsenic oxide can be treated with hydrogen sulfide where arsenic oxide is converted into arsenic sulfide and water is produced. So this is how we prepare arsenic sulfide salt which is a yellow colored uh, solution that is uh, example of a double decomposition method and similarly okay decomposition of uh, sodium thiosulfate sodium thiosulfate when treated with an acid uh, what happens free sulfur that is insoluble free sulfur settles down and that is how we obtain uh, sulfur salt because okay, so that's an example of decomposition method of preparing colloidal solution we can also pro prepare a colloidal solution by exchange of solvent in this method what we do is colloidal solution of few substances like uh, phosphorus or sulfur is obtained by treating the solution in alcohol the solution is prepared in alcohol and then it is poured into water as they are insoluble in water they form a colloidal solution so that is how uh, we prepare colloidal solution by exchange of solvent which means colloidal solution is prepared in uh, water and then the content is transferred into an another vessel containing alcohol and when you suddenly change the solvent then the true solution converts itself into a Colloidal solution that is how they prepare colloidal solution by means of exchange of solvent. Hope you all enjoyed today's session. We'll meet up with another concept in another segment.